Today, we're going to dive deep into Facebook for bands and musicians. You may recall me saying this a couple of weeks ago. Facebook is making it abundantly clear that they don't want bands on their platform. They want friends and family to be able to connect to each other, and they want more traditional businesses in order to advertise to them. That is their business model, and to be perfectly honest, I'm content to let them have it. I still stand by the sentiment in that video, but there are still some reasons that you may want to make Facebook a part of your social media strategy. Before we get into how best to use Facebook to promote your band, you should understand a little bit about the history of the Facebook newsfeed. Before 2006, Facebook posts were presented in something that they called the Facebook timeline. Essentially, all posts were presented to you one after the other in reverse chronological order. So you would see the newest posts first and progressively older posts as you scrolled further down the page. In February of 2006, Facebook introduced a new post delivery method called the Facebook News Feed. Now, rather than showing you all posts in reverse chronological order, the posts are shown to you according to an algorithm. As I stated in my previous video about Facebook, an algorithm is simply a list of instructions. In this case, the algorithm is a computer program that decides who gets to see what and how many people get to see everything that goes through Facebook. The algorithm tries to do this according to which posts it thinks you most want to see, but that's actually a gross oversimplification of how the algorithm works, but we'll get deeper into that in a minute or two. In March of 2009, Facebook introduced the like a page function, allowing you to like the page of a celebrity, band, or other business, which would then cause posts from that page to start appearing in your newsfeed. This was a very important change as it paved the way for targeted advertising. In January of 2012, Facebook introduced the ability for pages to put advertisements directly into your newsfeed. So now, all of those pages that you liked, as well as similar pages, will appear in your feed alongside posts from your friends and family. Not so coincidentally, in March of that same year, Facebook became a publicly traded company on the New York Stock Exchange. Before going public, Facebook as a company was mostly concerned with user growth, that is, attracting as many users as possible to the platform. Now that they are a publicly traded company, they're primarily concerned with generating revenue. The more money they make, the more money their shareholders make. If the company loses money, the shares drop in value, which will cause the shareholders to sell their stake in the company. If enough shareholders sell enough shares in a short enough amount of time, the company will be devalued even further. And that brings us to the finer points of the newsfeed algorithm. The Facebook newsfeed algorithm serves one purpose and one purpose only, to keep your eyes on Facebook for as long as possible. The longer your eyes are on Facebook, the more advertisements you see, and the more money Facebook makes, which keeps the shareholders happy. Keep that in mind as we go forward. Facebook wants you to keep eyes on Facebook for as long as possible. If you can make posts that keep people on Facebook, the algorithm will favor you by making sure that more people see your posts. That being said, no one outside of a select few Facebook employees really know exactly how the, uh, how the newsfeed algorithm works, but they have let a little bit of information trickle out. They want you to know just enough about the algorithm so that you can keep people engaged and using Facebook, but not enough that you can manipulate it to game the system and gain an unfair advantage over other pages. While we don't know precisely how the algorithm functions, there are some best practices that you can follow to make sure that as many people as possible see your content. First of all, the holy grail of Facebook pages is something that we call organic growth. Anytime someone likes your page or a post, makes a comment, shares a post without you paying for it, we call that organic. You want to maximize your organic growth as much as you can. The first way to do that is to set up your page for success. Be sure that you set up your band or musician page as a business, not as a personal page. Setting up as a business page allows you to have an unlimited number of followers, whereas a personal page is limited to 5,000 friends only. Also, you'll have access to Facebook Analytics, which gives you hard data that you can use to track your page growth over time, as well as the effectiveness of individual posts. You'll also have the option of boosting posts, which is essentially just paid advertising, but we'll get to that a little bit later. You should also choose appropriate pictures, especially when it comes to your profile and cover images. This one seems like a no-brainer, but you'd be surprised at the number of people that mess this part up. 
The tricky part about this is that different social networks require different image sizes and resolutions. Thankfully, there are options that make this easy. The one that I use is a website called Canva. Canva is a free resource, though there is a paid option, that allows you to create social media images or videos. They have templates available for a wide variety of different formatting options available, which takes most of the difficulty out of choosing the right dimensions for your photos. If you want a Facebook cover image, for instance, just choose the Facebook cover image template, then drag and drop their included text and images or upload your own. You can then download the image and use it however you like. After you have your images in place, be sure to fill out all relevant information for your page. This includes website, contact email address, and the about section. When it comes to making your social media posts, remember that Facebook only cares about you to the extent that they can make money off of you. That and the only job of the newsfeed algorithm is to keep as many eyes on Facebook for as long as possible. I know I'm starting to sound like a broken record when I say this, but that really can't be stated enough. If you want organic growth, and you do, every post should be made with the intent of keeping your audience on Facebook for as long as possible. One of the best ways to keep users on Facebook is to use internal Facebook features whenever possible. Use Facebook Stories, use Facebook Video, use any Facebook feature that you can and the algorithm will favor you. You need some proof? Check this out. In my earlier Facebook video, I said this. The thing about most of these services is that they offer a very easy way to ensure that your post gets seen by as many people as possible. All you have to do is give them money. About a month ago, I made two posts on Facebook that were nearly identical. Both of them used a very similar thumbnail image and used very similar wording, and they both pointed to an external link to the same YouTube video. The one for which I did nothing was seen by 22 people and received zero engagement. The post with $10 of advertising behind it was seen by 445 people and received nine engagements. As I was analyzing some of my past videos, I found something else that was very interesting. I had several other videos that weren't boosted. They also use Facebook videos instead of linking to YouTube. Now, which group of posts do you think kept more eyes on Facebook for longer? The posts that linked to YouTube or the posts that use Facebook videos? One quick side note, my primary social media strategy is in YouTube. That's why I don't use Facebook as my primary video platform. Next, you want to keep your fans engaged. One of the primary metrics that Facebook uses is something called social engagement. And engagement is basically a click. Every time someone clicks the like button, a reaction button, a follow button, a share button, that counts as an engagement. You want your posts to get as much engagement as they can. However, there is a caveat. While the algorithm wants you to receive engagement, it doesn't want you to ask for it. You have to carefully construct your posts so that people will want to like, share, etc. without explicitly asking them for it. Uh, if you post, for instance, uh, like this post if you want new music, or like my page for more videos, or share this page if you like puppies, uh, the algorithm will bury your post. One way to keep fans engaged is to ask questions. This drives conversation, which results in comments. And post comments are gold. Just make sure that the questions are relevant and will drive conversation. For instance, uh, what's your favorite song on the new record? Uh, what song do you want to see us cover? Or what CD or venue do you want to see us play? And when people start posting comments, be sure to like and reply to every comment that you possibly can to further drive engagement. Keep your posts specific and concise. Social media users have notoriously short attention spans. If they have to click the show more button on your post, all but the most dedicated fans will just keep on scrolling, and the Facebook algorithm knows this. Not only are people more likely to pass up a long post without reading it, but Facebook will be less likely to show it to them in the first place. Also, if you post any URL links in your post, which you should avoid anyway, Facebook truncates them at 100 characters. If you absolutely must use a URL in your post, I recommend a URL shortening service such as Bitly. Be sure that your posts are frequent, but not too frequent, and that they come at a time that is relevant to your audience. 
You should start by posting about twice per day and increase from there as you have time. You should also know your audience and when they're active on Facebook. You can try posting at different times of the day and using Facebook analytics to judge the optimal time for posting visibility and engagement, but you can also use your own common sense. For instance, if you're catering to an under 18 crowd, you'll want to post within an hour or two after school gets out, probably around 3 to 4 o'clock. For a young to middle-aged professional crowd, try right after the workday, maybe around 5 or 6 o'clock, and so on. Try to deduce when your target demographic is going to be most active on social media and time your posts accordingly. Be careful about the frequency of your posts, however, as you run the risk of your fans getting fatigued or the algorithm viewing your content as spam. Keep your posts relevant and timely. Use trending topics and hashtags in your posts to increase visibility and engagement. In doing this, I generally recommend staying away from divisive topics such as politics or contentious news stories, unless that is a part of your brand. Using pictures is another great way to make sure that your posts are relevant. Solicit friends or fans to send pictures from recent gigs and ask them for permission to use them in your social media. Also, be ready to credit the photographer, especially if they're a trained photographer. When choosing photos and videos to use, quality is key. Use only the best pictures that you have. Blurry, out-of-focus pictures aren't fun to look at and will cause people to view your band negatively. Also, live videos shot with a cell phone or even with a nice digital camera have notoriously terrible audio. Use these only if the audio has a decent level of quality. However, for live video, I recommend pulling live sound directly from the mixing board and syncing it up with the video in software later on. The technical ins and outs of this are far beyond the scope of this video, but if you'd like to know more about this, leave me a comment below and I'll see about covering it in a future video. While I'm on the subject of photo and video, I'll tell you about a brilliant strategy that a band in my area uses. This particular band plays on the college party circuit, and every time they play a fraternity or a sorority event, they wait until the crowd is at its peak, uh, then they'll take a band selfie from the stage with everyone in the audience crowded as close to the stage as they can get. They then get everyone to cheer, raise their drinks for the picture, and post that picture on their Facebook page as well as the page for the organization that hires them. They invite viewers to tag anyone that they recognize in the photo. As I said earlier, you don't necessarily want to ask for engagement. However, that photo shows up on the personal Facebook news feed and in the permanent photo album of every single person that was tagged in the photo and their friends. Even if they didn't tag themselves, all you need is someone to tag them. That is one of the most brilliant uses of social media I've ever seen. Call to action. You should include a call to action or CTA in most of your posts. I stated before that you shouldn't explicitly solicit likes and shares, and that still stands true. However, there are other ways to make calls to action. Facebook actually has a feature called a CTA button. It's a button that you can add to your page that you can customize in a variety of different ways. For instance, you can have it redirect to a page where a user can buy tickets for a future event, or maybe a booking page where they can hire you for an event. You can add, change, or remove the CTA button at any time, so give it some thought and see if you can think of some innovative ways to use it. Now that you have a good idea of how to use Facebook, you want to consider whether you even want to make Facebook a part of your social media strategy in the first place. I said in my previous video that Facebook seems to not want musicians on their platform, so I was content to not even use it. That being said, I still think that Facebook may be a necessary evil for most musicians in bands, if for no other reason than the fact that Facebook attracts over 2.5 billion active users each month. I mean, everyone uses Facebook. However, that is kind of a double-edged sword. Because there are so many people on Facebook, it's really hard to cut through the noise and stand apart from the crowd. Attaining organic growth gets harder the more people, and especially the more businesses that start Facebook accounts. It takes a whole lot of work to maintain a visible presence on Facebook, and you may decide that it isn't worth the effort. In my opinion, if your target crowd is the 25 and up bar going crowd, Facebook should probably be a part of your social media strategy. For the 18 to 25 year old crowd, the lines start to blur a little bit. You should still try Facebook, but you also might want to focus on Snapchat, Instagram, and maybe even TikTok, if it hasn't been banned yet. <laughs> For the under 18 crowd, Facebook probably isn't a viable option. One final thing that I'll discuss is the use of paid promotions or advertising. 
As stated many times, organic growth is what you want to strive for. However, if you want to get in front of as many eyes as possible, you're probably going to have to pay some money to Facebook eventually. If you decide to go this route, it has to be a long-term strategy, not just a one-time thing. Set aside a regular budget, preferably around $50 per month, that you will use for advertising. Take the post or posts that have received the most organic engagement and boost them with your advertising budget. The idea is to take the best performing posts and boost the signal so they'll perform even better. You don't want to put money behind a post that's receiving poor engagement because it will continue to receive poor engagement. The only difference is that it will receive poor engagement from more people. The last thing that you need to do is be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button on this video because I have lots more great content like this on the way. I put a ton of time and research into these videos so you don't have to. So if you want more ways to support me, check in the description below where I've also linked to some resources that will help you in your social media strategy. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.